Hello and welcome, my name is Miro, and if you're first time here, th that is my name, and I talk about Hoyas mostly. I do have some other plans, but I rarely talk about them because someone has a Hoya issue. And if you are returning, well, welcome back. You already know all of this, so kind of a waste of time for you, so I apologize for that. Today I wanted to talk about how to grow Hoyas if you don't know much about them. This is a topic that was suggested by one of you, and I am very, very sorry. I don't actually remember who suggested the topic, but thank you so much. You can say, it was me in the comments below, and I will like it and reply and potentially even pin it so other people can thank you as well. The reason why I find this interesting is because a lot of the times I get suggestions from people how to grow a certain Hoya, how to bloom it, and a lot of the times I don't have it. I do have around 300 Hoyas, which people also ask a lot, so now you know. It's around 300. We did not count yet, but we will. But it is really impossible for me to have all of them and to know everything about all of them. I would go as far as to say that I also don't know probably about half of my Hoyas what conditions they prefer. You just kind of wing it and you know sometimes they like your environment sometimes they don't but I actually wanted to talk to you about this and how you can find out what your Hoya likes. Today we also have a guest Hoya and it will be Hoya Medinillifolia so we are kind of going to research her. I'm gonna take you step by step how I would research a plant if I wanted to find something about it. Now it is important here to say that I do not do this for all of my Hoyas. Sometimes you know I just get a Hoya, I root the cutting and it starts to grow and it blooms and it's like well that you know it was easy. But sometimes a plant will present itself as a challenging creation of nature and sometimes we need to put in some extra work to find out you know what we can do to help the plant out. For most of the common Hoyas and even for some of the uncommon but popular Hoyas, you will find a care guide out there. So that is why I chose something like Hoya Medinillifolia for today's video because I didn't really research it myself. I only looked it up in you know some of the Facebook groups to see experience of other people, but that is the extent of it. I don't know where it comes from. I never looked it up. I just know that I like it and I knew that I needed to have it. So I'm going to look up that with you and we're gonna find out. And of course, this is not going to be a care guide on Hoya Medinilla Folia. This is more like a starting point. Okay, so we are going to get our Hoya from the grow tent. So that's where she lives. I'm going to set you down here and attempt not to knock you over. But if I do, I do apologize. Okay, so we can kind of look inside and see what's happening. So it is nighttime for them because the lights turn off at night. So they have the opposite schedule. We're gonna go to my research station, aka the desk, and, and continue there. All right, so we have our Hoya Medinillifolia right here, and this is the Hoya that we are researching today. Well, I'm pretending to research because I already know a bit about this plant because this is my second time recording this. I apologize, it was supposed to be a true, genuine experience because I did find out something new about this plant, actually. So first thing that we can tell by just looking at this plant is we can say it is a thin-leaved Hoya. Now, whenever I get a plant, that is usually how I assess what it would like. So for thin-leaved Hoyas like Hoya Medinella folia, I usually assume they want more water and they want lower light. For something that has thicker leaves, I initially just assume that they would like to have maybe more light and less water. So that is the first thing. And usually for thin-leaved Hoyas, what I assume is that they would like a mix that maybe retains more water. Now, assumptions are what they are, assumptions, right? And they are not always right. And this Hoya will prove us wrong today. Thank you very much for that. Keeping it real, you will see that some of the assumptions that I made about this Hoya are not necessarily correct. And I very quickly researched it when I got it because this is a very special, very unique Hoya and I didn't want to, you know, mess it up. Now just a little bit of info on this plant. It is not really relevant to the video, but I thought it would be nice to bring it up. I got my plant from Camilla Geddon in May of 2022. The original leaves have gone. They're no longer with us, but it did grow all of these leaves, which I, I don't know. I don't think it's amazing, but it is, I guess, good growth because I do know that a lot of people struggle with this plant. So we're going to put her off to the side. She is still relevant to the story, but we are going to start to kind of search about this plant. The first thing that we will do, we will go to Google. Hey, Google. 
Google. Okay, Google. And there are a couple of websites that I always check. They are just very reliable websites. And one of those is Plants of the World Online or P-O-W-O. So I'm just going to go to Plants of the World Online here on my computer. Plants of the World Online is international collaborative effort to bring all of this botanical data that we have and to kind of make it digital. So it is a very useful database. So maybe if we just type Hoya Med, M-E-D, we can see two choices and I can see Medinillifolia. And right away we can see our first search result, or actually the only search result, it is species Hoya medinillifolia. Now, when I click on that, I already have some information available to me. I see that the native range of this species is Borneo, Sabah or Sarawak. It's an epiphytic shrub and it grows primarily in the wet tropical biome. I can see that it was published here by Rhoda, that is Michele Rhoda and Simonson for Natalie Simonson in 2011. You do see here in the corner part of the herbarium sheet, but we will go back to that. So. Right now we will just keep scrolling and you can see here the island of Borneo and that is where this Hoya is natively from. You can see in the publication section that this plant was also published in a guide to Hoyas of Borneo in 2016. A lot of you I think have that book so you will know and it is a very useful research tool. I still don't have it but I know what's in the book. You know, I know that it's a good book. We just keep going here. So this is still not anything that is significant for us who want to cultivate the plant. But the next thing that we can see here is the herbarium catalog and we can access the herbarium sheet. Now, sometimes in herbarium sheets, you will have some additional information that is very interesting for us. Sometimes not, but you know, best to check it out to find out. In this part where it says barcode, you can click there to open the herbarium sheet or you can just go on the top of the page where we saw that nifty photo and we can click there. But I'm just gonna click here where it says barcode and it opens up a new page and here we can see some more of the information. So we can see who was the collector of the plant. We can see that it was collected in 1984. So a long time ago, she's an old lady. And, well, not actually an old lady. I'm so sorry if I offended anyone who, who was born in 84. Not an old, sorry. But you know, it's not the newest Hoya out there, which doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, we still love you. Now, this is where the information comes that can be potentially of use to us. It was found in Batulaga Plateau, Batang Rejang 7th Division. So we're, we're definitely gonna need to Google that because I got no idea exactly where that is and the altitude is 300 meters so that's not actually high of an altitude it is above sea level 300 meters above sea level so this is not one of those hoyas that has been found on high altitudes like some hoyas from china that prefer cooler conditions just by looking at that we can see that hoya is not something that would probably prefer cooler conditions and we will look into the climate here and that will trust me it will confirm it some more information that we can see here is we can see that it was found in mixed dipterocarp forest and it's an epiphytic plant. This is not too bad. This is a good start. Now what I would like to do is I would like to find the publication for this plant. Now there are several ways that you can find a publication. What I like to do is I usually just like to type the name of the plant plus research gate. Research Gate is a wonderful place where you can find publications, so I'm just gonna do that. And right here, as the first and second result, I can see the research papers, I can see the publications for Hoya Medinillifolia. So I can just click on that. You have the option here to download the full text, you can just read it online. Usually, you know, you don't really need to read the entire publication if you are specifically looking for cultivation details. If you're looking for any other information, then yes, please go ahead. But because this video is about cultivating Hoyas, we're just gonna skim through this. We don't want to read every single word, every single sentence. Usually in the introduction of the publication here, you will see the distribution area of the entire genus. And in the description part here, which we will also skip, if you want to know more, sure, you can read it, but also I think if you are holding the Hoya in your own hands. I don't know. Maybe if you're not sure of the identity and maybe there's some interesting stuff there that you want to read. Usually what you will read in the description is how big the leaves are, how wide they are. Maybe you will read what is the variation within the species, what the flower looks like, if there are any variations in the color of the flower, stuff like that. So we don't want to read all of that today. 
Simply, we do not have time. We want to know about the cultivation. So for that part, we will need to go to the habitat and ecology. Here we can find more interesting information for us. The species was found in two localities only, both are in lowland Sarawak, in dipterocarp forests and growing epiphytically. One was collected on a tree about two meters from the ground along a river bank. It is possible to suppose that this species may need the high humidity provided by the proximity to the river. Yeah, she, I can confirm that. Definitely. Definitely. Or may require higher light levels compared to the light available in a more densely covered part of the forest. I have found something else to be true with my Hoa Medinella folia, so again, we will come back to it, but, you know, just remember what we have read. So the rest of this publication, we have some additional comments, how Hoa Medinella folia can be distinguished from Hoa multiflora and things like that. Again, this is not something that we want to get into today because maybe our time is limited, maybe our hot beverage is getting cold. Let's check. So we do not want to read all of that today. Instead, we want to keep searching for more information. Now, my next step here would be because we found out it is from lowland Sarawak, we can look up what the climate there is. So I'm just gonna type in Sarawak climate. And then in the next tab, I will just do lowland Sarawak. And this is how you get into the tab craziness. And then the next one, this is what I always do, by the way, tab after tab after tab. The first one, Sarawak has an equatorial climate. Okay, so that's useful for us. The temperature is relatively uniform throughout the year within the range of 23 degrees early in the morning to 32 degrees during the day. In the highland areas, such as Barrio, the temperature hovers between 16 and 25 during the day and gets as low as 11 on some nights. Now, that is not really important to us, the highland areas. We are interested in this one, 23 to 32. That's quite warm. Really spoiled there. 23, really? Haven't we heard about the gas crisis? So we now know that Hoa Medinella folia is a very, very spoiled plant. So 23 degrees, that can be a challenge in some homes. Now I know that in my grow tent it is 22 to 23, so probably not the most ideal. It does get a bit higher and it will get to be 30 in summer, but like not all year round. And we can see that the climate is uniform throughout the year. So this plant is probably going to want the same conditions throughout the entire year. So she doesn't want a cooler period like some Hoyas. She doesn't want less light, I assume. Interestingly, Sarawak is one of the coldest regions in Malaysia. With an average daily high temperature of only, of only 32 degrees? <laughs> no, I do not want more. Most precipitation falls from November to January. So I don't think that there is an actual dry season, like dry, 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 but we see that there is more rain from November to January. We can also see sunshine hours throughout the day are pretty uniform. Again, in our home conditions, that it really isn't much... Uh, if you are growing in a grow tent or a cabinet, you will probably need to keep the lights on for 12 to 14 hours, depends, maybe even 16. If it's in a window, maybe you will have to supplement the light in winter, so that really, it doesn't really mean too much to us. Another very interesting thing that we can see here is rain days per month. And I'm gonna tell you why this is interesting, because some people treat Hoyas like they are cacti, and here is the proof, the proof is in the pudding, or in the graph, in this case. We can see that there is always at least 13 days per month when there will be rain and it actually goes up and we can see in December 21 days of rain So that means it rains almost every day in December I would say there is a bit of a dry season again I wouldn't call it a dry season by any stretch of imagination because they still get 13 days of rain Another interesting thing for us in these graphs is relative humidity in the percentages and we can see it really hovers around 90 She really wants it humid. I don't think this is a whole that would do really well in household conditions. Of course, she can do well in a cabinet, in a grow tent, but I don't, I would not just put her out in the savage environment of our rooms. You know, how dare I? This is a digression, just to warn you. I also typically find that thin leaved Hoyas such as these are very, very susceptible to mites. Of course, we have seen lately that all Hoyas are susceptible to mites, but these are really, really bad. We did a great job there with Googling. There are a couple of other things that I would like to check that I often check when I am looking into Hoyas. First, you can subscribe to Hoya Telegraphen. Hoya Telegraphen is a publication from Swedish Hoya Society, and 
they write about Hoyas, obviously. What else would they write about? And it is just a great resource to find information about Hoyas, not only because they collaborate with Mikkel and Natalie, but also because in every issue they will cover several Hoyas species, and they will also offer you some accounts from people who are growing these plants at home. So I did find the issue with the help of my friend Rachel Claude Conroy on Hoya Mendinellifolia. I thought I had it, but for whatever reason I don't. I was, I emailed about that. As you can see, it is in Swedish, so we will need to employ Google Translate. So there is a photo here by late Toral Nyhaus, and I do believe this is what the plant looks like in nature. As you can see, some leaves are burnt. You know, we're not having perfect leaves in nature, so there is no pressure for me to have perfect leaves at home. So even though this plant was published in 2011, and even though this plant was discovered in 1984, it seems that this plant was not in cultivation. So this was written in 2016. So she is not that new to cultivation I would say and I think that's because she's a problematic diva that's why no one wants to grow you I mean we all want to grow you but come on be easier so Toral and I came to the same conclusion here 300 meters above sea level this is where the plant grows which means it wants it warm and humid so if you are growing your Hoyas in a cooler room, you're not gonna have probably much luck unless you employ some heaters for this plant. So there is a nice comment here at the end. No one is growing this species in Sweden yet. So that was in 2016. So I got my plant in, again, 2022 from Camilla. So things clearly have changed. But I think one of the reasons this plant was not grown because this plant is really difficult to ship. I received it in two or three days. Again, I never can remember exactly how many days the shipping took, but it was very brief and the plant already dried out. The cutting already was a bit dried out. It took her a long time to root. In the video where Summer Rain Oaks visits Toral Nighthouse, this is actually the plant that Toral is trying to revive. So that is the plant that we see, the rotten plant that we see that has lost all of the leaves and she's trying to revive it in moss. So this is the... This is she. That's the troublemaker. But the point of this video is not for me to convince you that you should get this plant, even though I think you should. The point of this video is so we can find out how we can cultivate a plant. So right now we know she's problematic, she likes it warm, she likes it humid, and she's an epiphytic plant. So what I would like to do now is I would like to visit a couple of other websites that I visit when I research for plants. One of those is myhoyas.com. This is a website by Christina Carlson. So she is from Sweden and she has been growing Hoyas for I think over 20 years. There is a lot of information about a lot of different Hoyas. So we will just check under Hoya M to see if she wrote about Hoya Mendinilla folia. It seems to me that there is no info yet on Hoya Mendinilla folia. I know that she is growing this plant, but again, it takes time to update these things. Then we can go to Vermont Hoyas. Now you all know Doug either from the website Vermont Hoyas or from YouTube. So Hoyas L to M. And again, no one says anything about Hoya Mendinilla folia. There is no info. Encouraging. It's looking encouraging. And then one more website that I like to check is by another Swede, May, April, and it's called Frostwit SE. I will leave all the links down below and I will look up Medinella Folia. Thankfully, they all have search functions and we come up with nothing. So we checked some of the websites. We can additionally go to YouTube and see if there is maybe a video on Hoya Medinella Folia. And let's just try that. Oh, hello, it's me. It's me. Tanhui is really worth your money. I, I still agree with that. No one is talking about how to grow Hoya Mendinella folia. So I think when I bloom her, which maybe soon, I don't know if I told you, she has a peduncle here. So when I bloom her, maybe I make a spotlight video for this plant. I don't know, I'll think about it. And now we came to one of the last places that we have to check. Facebook. I'm not against anyone looking for any information on Facebook. I look for a lot of information on Facebook. Again, you can find a lot of accounts from growers on Facebook. So we're gonna look up several groups. First group that I like to look up is Hoya Identification. Now, I don't think we will find much info there because 
We, we are looking for cultivation info and we don't look for that in Hoya identification. But I'm just gonna check. Sometimes people write stuff and there is no info. A very good group to look for cultivation tips is Hoya 101 Plus. And here I will just type Hoya Medinella Folia. Bingo! So we find a story of Hoya Medinella Folia that doesn't look too good and this person is struggling with the Hoya. The greenhouse is 27 degrees and 80% humidity. So this should be thriving, she is not. Now the roots seem to be the issue for this plant and this person has it in cocoa peat and perlite, something that honestly I would have done had I not seen this in May of 22 because I did look this up when I got the plant. And you can see here we have some yellowing leaves which are probably not gonna last for much longer and we are going to look into the comments. We have people suggesting to grow in Lekka balls, but what is more interesting is Natalie Simonson. And she says Medinella folia needs extra more airy substrate. It didn't like loose coconut soil for me. So a great tip here because I would have done that too. Possibly your substrate is too compact by seeing the photos. So it seems to be that this is a true epiphytic plant. So when they were saying it is an epiphytic shrub, they were not joking. A lot of Hoyas are epiphytic plants, but they are going to do really well in cocoa peat and perlite, like 50-50, half and half mix or bark or something like that. And this may do well just in bark, but clearly cocoa peat is a bit too much for her. Now what Natalie suggests is to grow it one part perlite, one part potting soil, or 100% pumice. I chose 100% pumice because pumice is inorganic, it does not break down over time. Soil, cocoa peat, bark, all of those will break down over time, it will make the potting mix acidic and also more compact and that does not happen with pumice. So that's why I chose to grow her in pumice and to spill all the pumice and she is doing okay. Again, we did have a bit of a struggle, but honestly, when you start to read about this plant, it's like very common. Again, we see another account here from another person growing Hoya Medinella folia. This one is under a dome on a heat mat. So really trying to, to make her happy here. This one had spider mites and the lower leaf is yellowing. I think my plant also had spider mites. I did treat it a couple of times. As I said, thin-leaved Hoyas very susceptible to mites. Here we have a one comment by Christina Carlson, so myhoyas.com. I find this Hoya easy to drop leaves even without any bugs or pests. High humidity seems to help mine after I increase that it has grown very well and also grown a new vine. So it seems that high humidity is very crucial for this plant. A couple of other groups that you can check on Facebook that are very useful are Stemma Journal. So Stemma Journal is being published again. Also you can go to the webpage of Stemma a journal and that is stemmajournal.org stemma with two m's i will leave again the links down below you can find some interesting information there you can find a lot of information about newly published species about species that are maybe disputed there are also cultivation tips and cultivation advice so in stemma the broad mites and the flat mites were discussed at length here we are we are done with our research and we know that this is one tricky plant to grow and i can confirm i also just want to add on the note of light that my plant was in highlight and she was not a big fan of highlight she was about 60 centimeters from 300 watt light that is dimmed to 75 watts. She did not prefer. Hard pass. So I moved her down to the bottom of my tent and she is doing well. So this is definitely a plant that presents a bit of a challenge, but again, that's not what this video is about. We found out what we wanted. High humidity, warm, above 23. High light, again, debatable. I think maybe higher light, for other people is not like the higher light for me because higher light for me is just like sun, you know, higher light. <laughs> and we found that this is a true epiphytic plant and it is really picky about the potting mix. So great information to start cultivating this Hoya at home. Do I recommend it? Yes and no. Eh. Try everything once. It is a bit more different if you're going to look into cultivars. You're not going to find cultivars on ResearchGate. You're not going to find crosses on ResearchGate. For those, you will really just have to go to Hoya groups on Facebook. You can look for some of them in Hoya Telegraphin, but usually they're not the ones that are spotlighted. The species are the spotlight. Cultivars, we gotta figure those out ourselves. That's also kind of fun. But, you know, for species, 
this is what it is. This is how you research a species if you want to know how to cultivate it. And if you want to know more information about it, then just don't skip all those parts that we skipped today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it useful. You can leave me down in the comments what you thought about it, but like, be nice, be positive, be uplifting. Don't be, don't be rude. Don't be mean. No one, no one wants to see that. So not that I get too many of those, but you know, just a reminder if someone has the urge within themselves, just, you know, don't, don't act on it. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And of course, subscribe because that also helps a lot. And if you're subscribed, thank you so much. You are very nice. I don't know why I did a little dance. Let's forget about that. I hope this video will help you take care of your Hoyas a little bit better. You know, I hope it makes it a little bit easier to, you know, start with, with a new Hoya without panicking much that there isn't a video or maybe no one is talking about it in a Facebook group. And yeah, good luck with growing your plants. And that's it. That's all I have to say, except for, you know, have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon. Trying to be cute, but not really working. <laughs> Okay. Goodbye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Youth at the Wallamood for a very generous donation. And a big shout out to all of my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne-Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Houseplant Heather, Hoya Heather, Jana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Catherine, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Koo, Kelly also, Kristen Sherwood, Laplan de Steph, Mandy Milliken, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perde, Marty Miller, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Naley Yang, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Stephanie Zeely May, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Noob, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Youth of the Walmut, and Zlokovny Pony. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Anna. Margaret, Anna K, Brenda Little, Brenna B, Brianna Phillips, Kelone, Christina Greengrass, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plant Druid, Plantolania, Ringlov, and Tang Watana Sria Cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons Kari, Carrie Constance, Hacenta, Jolie Sullivan, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramanium, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chen Muller, and Paula Plants. Thank you all so much for incredible support. I hope that you're enjoying the videos. I hope this video was useful for you and I hope that you will have a much easier time researching your Hoyas and learning how to grow them. Have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Goodbye!